Hi everyone, we're back and I am super excited. We received a delivery from Italy a few days ago. I made a small video about it. This flower is fantastic. I've seen loads of people using it. I haven't been able to get hold of any myself. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna compare a dough made with Biga and a direct method. So today we're gonna to be preparing the Biga uh, we're going to be using 375 grams of this fantastic flour. 377 grams, we'll put it in our Tupperware. So what's a biga? A biga is a pre-fermentation made with 100% of the flour, 50% of the water, and 100% of the yeast. Now we're going to be using dry yeast this time. We'll put it into the water to dissolve it. As a general guideline, uh, if using dry yeast by comparison to fresh yeast, we use 50% less dry yeast because the dry yeast is so much more strong and intense. We only need half of it. Okay, so now our yeast is dissolved. We're going to add, I'm just getting the grains of yeast that were left in the tub. We're going to add all of that water to our flour. I can't wait to see the results of this. It's really exciting for me. Okay, then we don't touch the biga. We shake it to prepare it. No need to touch. We don't want to create gluten at this time. We just want to mix the water with the flour and come up with a nice shaggy biga. Yeah, looking nice. For my Italian friends, oggi facciamo biga con la molina, molino vigivano Vesuvio farina. Questa troppo buona farina. Facciamo la biga con 375 grammi di farina, 182 grammi di acqua e 1 grammo di lievito secco. That should do. When all the flour is gone, your biga is ready. Okay, I don't see any flour in here. No loose flour. So the biga is ready. We're going to put it in the fridge for 24 hours after we've rested it for one or two hours at room temperature. We'll see you tomorrow, guys, when we're going to be making the direct dough as well as taking the bigger out of the front, out of the fridge and completing the dough. See you tomorrow, can't wait. Ragazzi, ci vediamo domani. Domani facciamo la rinfresco con la biga e l'impasto diretto. Ci vediamo domani. Welcome back everybody. I'm super excited. We're using Vesuvio flour today. I've been dying to use this flour for ages. So we left our biga in the fridge for 24 hours. This is how it looks after 24 hours. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it up and we're going to put it in the mixer. We are going to complete the dough and work at a final hydration of 75% hydration, which is for me the best. I love 75% hydration. Very difficult to work with the dough. So we're going to break up the bigger, put it in the mix, and to complete the dough, we're going to use 95 grams of water and 13 grams of salt. So when we're refreshing the bigger or completing the dough, we're going to add the water nice and slowly, 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 let the water absorb before adding the next bit of water. So let's begin. After this, like I said yesterday, we're going to make a direct dough using exactly the same flour, exactly the same yeast, exactly the same mixer, and exactly the same everything. Then we're going to be able to compare a pre fermented biga dough with a direct dough with no pre fermentation steps. So we're going to do that tomorrow. 
after we've been able to rest both our doughs in the fridge for another 24 hours. Okay, so the sides of the bowl are clean, so we're going to add the next bit of water. As I've said in previous videos, and maybe even already in this one, this whole process of reviving or refreshing or completing the dough takes about 15 to 20 minutes. We can't rush a good thing. Don't be afraid of using a slightly higher speed when you're doing this, guys. It's not going to damage anything. It also gives you a good indication of when it's time to add some more water because when you hear the motor starting to slow down, you know that the water has become incorporated into the dough and it's time to add more water. So we're going to do that now because my motor is slow. And you see how it speeds up again? While we're mixing, let's have a closer look at the flour. Here we have a W number. This W value denotes the strength of the flour. And here it also says that it's good to absorb 75% of the water. So this flour is good for 75% hydration. We're ready to add the last bit of water, so it's time to put the salt in. I'm gonna stop the mixer, lift it up. Oh, look at that, that looks fantastic already. Look at it, beautiful. Let's add the salt, close up the mixer again, let it begin, and then we'll add the remaining water, and wait till that is absorbed into the dough. Okay, the dough's ready. It's playtime. This is a bit I love. I've got to admit, one of the favourite parts of making a pizza is stretching the dough. Now look at this. I can feel the difference in this flour already in the dough because of the flour. Look at it. Super elastic. Much more elastic than the flour I've used before. That's fantastic. That's nice. It's not so sticky either. Okay, time to get it out onto the counter and let's stretch it. Look at this stuff. It's fantastic. Look how stretchy, look how elastic it is. Now usually with the previous flowers I've used, I'd rest it, but I think we're gonna go straight for the stretch. Let's stretch this dough. This has amazing properties. It is different. Totally different. I love stretching this stuff. I love it. Look at that. It's much more elastic than the other flowers I've used. Much more. We're only using 375 grams this time by comparison to half a kilo or a kilo in previous times. So the fact that we're getting halfway down the counter says a lot. So now we're going to fold it. Ah, give it a bit of a fold, slap and fold. That's amazing. The dough is coming off my fingers so early. It's beautiful to work with. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to walk the dough one more time. In. Then we're going to rest it, put some olive oil, not too much, not too little, give it some love. Get some plastic wrap. Cover it and let it rest it for 15 to 30 minutes. Let the gluten build. We'll see what we're like and we might stretch it again in 15 minutes. Okay, we're back. It's been 15 minutes. I'm going to get us closer on the dough. Let's have a look at what we've got. Whoa. Take off the plastic wrap. Let's have a look. Look at that. 
This is the most elastic dough I've worked with. It's completely elastic. Look at that. I think we need to stretch this one more time. It's stretching much better, much better. Look at that. That's beautiful, beautiful. And considering this is less than a kilo, it's only 375 grams of flour. It's stretching almost as much as a kilo of flour. So let's pick it up. Wow, I love it. Let's see how manageable this dough is going to be. Let's tidy up after the 24 hours. 75% hydration is super difficult to work with at the best of times. Slap and fold, slap and fold, slap and fold. Okay, now we're going to walk the dough. But I think we're going to rest it again. Yeah, we're going to rest it again. And we're going to fold it again. Because it's not terribly sticky, but I think it will benefit from another rest. So a bit more olive oil, give it some love. Get the olive oil underneath it as well. We'll take our plastic wrap, save the plan, use the same piece. And we'll give it one more rest. See you in 15 minutes. Okay, while we're resting the other dough, why don't we begin our direct dough method? So, we've got the 375 grams of flour. Let's put it in the mixer. This is the direct method, so there's no pre-fermentation. We will then put our yeast, dry yeast, 1.2 grams in the water and dissolve the yeast in the water. Yeast is now dissolved. We're going to add all the water to the mixer. This is why we call it a direct method. And let's start the mixer. So we're going to mix this until it's all absorbed, all the water is absorbed into the flour. Then we're going to put the salt in and we're going to mix it again until the salt is absorbed into the flour. And then we're going to take it out of the mixer and rest it while we make the balls from the other pre-fermentation dough. Okay, we're ready to add the salt. I'm going to feed the salt into the direct dough through the feeder. 13 grams of salt. We'll continue mixing until the dough stiffens up a little bit and then we'll bring it out on the table. In the meantime, let's go back to our pre-fermentation bigger and work that. Okay, it's been another 15 minutes. We're back to our bigger recipe. It's not as sticky, look at that. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna divide it into balls. So we need the scales. We need the dough cutter. Let's see what we've got. 319 318 okay so we've got two 318 gram balls let's make the balls first ball in the pot let's work with the second ball using the same technique Yep, 
Beautiful. A little bit of olive oil goes in the pot. Pick up the ball. Put it in the pot. Let's get some lids ready to go in the fridge for 24 hours. A bigger recipe. Okay, back to our direct. Now, I want to show you a quick telltale sign. You see this condensation on the guard? Now, you're not going to get this on all mixers, but it's a sign to me that the temperature of the dough is increasing. So, we're going to stop the mixer now. Let's have a look. Now, it is beautiful, very elastic, very nice, but I can feel the warmth in this. So, it's time to take it out and put it on the table, and we're going to rest it for a while before making the balls. See you in about five minutes. We've taken the dough out of the mixer. Look at it. Very, very elastic. Quite sticky as well, but very elastic. So let's slap and fold it a little bit. We'll rest it now, 15 minutes. Bit of olive oil. Helps from helps to stop it to stick on the plastic wrap. Look at that, it's a beautiful ball. Beautiful. That's nice. Let's get the plastic wrap from before. One of the things about resting periods, it gives me time to clean up and wash all my equipment. Beautiful, love it. Okay, let's let that rest for 15 to minutes to 30 minutes. We'll see you when we get back. Okay, we're back, it's been 15, maybe 20 minutes. Let's have a look at this dough. Let's bring you in close. Okay. Ah, lovely, it's beautiful. Look at the extensibility. Look at that, look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're going to actually, with this dough, looking at the properties, I think we're gonna fold it one more time. That's fantastic, look at that. And we're gonna rest this for about an hour. for an hour more. In a bowl. We'll put a little bit of olive oil, stop it from sticking. Not too much, not too little. Nice, nice, that is just so nice. I love it. So let's... Put it in here. We'll get a bit more plastic wrap and we're going to rest this for an hour. Okay, we're back. It's been an hour. Let's see how our director is doing. Looking nice. Let's take it out. It's time to make the balls. It's just so lovely. So nice. Look at that beautiful dough. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's get the tool. Cool. All right, let's make the balls. I'm gonna, this is so nice. It's just lovely. Look at this. Look at this stuff. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay. We'll close the dough. Super important closing the dough. One ball. I love this flower. I love it. I'm in love. Let's see. It's just a shame it's not available in the UK. Probably not available in many places. Okay, now we're gonna, we've marked the tub. 
with the D for direct. One more. So we don't lose track of which is which in our comparison. Two bones. I know what's going to happen. This is going to rise so much, it's going to burst out of the tub. Let's put our caps on. We have all of our dough, our bigger pre-fermentation, and our direct. We're now going to leave them at room temperature for an hour, put them in the fridge overnight. Tomorrow we'll be making the pizza. I can't wait. I really can't wait to see the result of what we've got here today. Super exciting. See you guys tomorrow. Okay guys, we're back. The moment we've been building up to for the past two days. The biga is here. 48 hour process biga. Let's see. There she goes. We'll begin with the direct dough. We have semolina and flour 50 50. here she comes there she is it's cold i can feel it but it looks beautiful look at that though let's give it a coating that is so nice that is so so nice okay now we've given it a coating we'll take it to the table it's beautiful. Now, we're going to push all the air to the crust. We're going to leave half an inch for the crust. It's a denser dough than I've worked with before. It feels different, but it feels really, really, really nice. Flip it over. Maybe a bit more flour. Try and keep it as uh, circular as possible for aesthetics, but this is just aesthetics. It doesn't affect the flavor. So in previous episodes i've made what's known as pizza canotto in naples life raft pizza uh, i'm gonna try and make the crust just a little bit less pronounced but still quite pronounced still quite big flip it over one more time open it for our pizza now if you remember these guys were 300 grams okay almost got a pizza almost got a pizza if you get a tiny rip don't worry about it you can close it again it's only a big rip that we have to worry about. There we go, we've got a tiny tear. Okay, I think we've got a pizza. So, first, tomato. Proper polpa, Italian polpa, from a brand called Muti. Tiny bit more. Then some parmesan to be called a proper Neapolitan pizza. We need parmesan. Now I'm going to push the tomato and a little bit of parmesan slightly onto the crust. It's going to give the crust some, crust some nice colour. I think we need a little bit more. There we are. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Okay, wash the hands. 
a little bit more parmesan to compensate. Some olive oil. Can't be a Neapolitan pizza without olive oil. Some basil. Lovely green basil. Some fior di latte cheese. It's going to be, I'm so excited. I'm so, so, so excited to see what this comes out like. Can't wait to get it in the oven. Okay, with this one, we're going to make some salami di Napoli, authentic Italian spicy salami. Beautiful. Flavor is fantastic. Okay, so time to get it on the peel. Open it up. Make it round. Beautiful. Let's take it to the oven. Guys, this is my oven. The Association of Vera Pizza in Italy says a dome temperature of 485 degrees. We're now looking at 480. Oh my God, look at that. It's fantastic. Let's get it out. Before it's too late. Look at that. Look at that. That's the direct dough. That is fantastic. That is amazing. Look at the elevation on that crust. She's inside. This is our direct dough pizza number two. Look at the elevation on that crust. It's just amazing. Have I found my new favorite flour? Well, that will be in the tasting. Soft and crunchy. Let's have a look at the structure inside the dough. Let's take the scissors. Snip, snip, snip. Snip here. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's flip it around. You can see the other side. Just amazing. Look at that. It's so soft. So nice. Oh my god, I love this flower. Let's let this biga come out of the pot. There she goes. Look at that dough. Look at that dough. Look, it's beautiful. See the air bubbles, the lightness. It's totally different to the direct. We're going to take a bit of flour because I'm running low and put it on the top. Let's flip it over. It's full of air. It's better. It's nicer than the direct. Look at that. Nice. Take it out. Oh, look at that. It's so beautiful. Look at that. Loving those crusts, loving the elevation. Look at that. That's our bigger. It worked. It's lovely. It's beautiful. Look at the size of that crust. Look at the elevation. It's not ridiculous. It's just beautiful. Oh, look at that. Okay. Soft and crunchy. Let's cut in and check the structure by comparison to the direct. Chop, chop. Open it up. Look at that. It's much more airy, elastic. You can taste it just by looking at it. Let's get this section. Look. Look at that. Beautiful. Now that's the difference. The director had a beautiful structure, it was lovely, here it is, but with the bigger, it's just so much more airy and light. Fantastic, I think, in terms of the crust, the bigger is the winner. Direct, bigger. 
fantastic. I can't wait to eat it. Guys, like and subscribe, please. Okay, hi. You've not seen me before. The last and ultimate test of our pizza is the taste test. First, the direct. Mmm, it's soft. It is light. The flavour is really good. This flour is special. It's heaven, the flavour in this flour. Fantastic. Well, the flavour is fresh in my mouth. Oh, bigger. I'm going to fold this over so you get all the toppings on the crust. Much lighter, more intense flavour. Non c'è parole. I don't have words. This is fantastic. In my personal opinion, bigger, all day long. Live in La Biga Loco, buy from us.